morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing we, good. We were talking about it, and you and I were talking about it last night uh, after the game, that that felt a lot mm-hmm. like March, that game, just kind of the pace of it. What were the comparisons for, for postseason to what you saw last night in the regular season of LSU Florida? Well, I think if you look at the NCAA tournament, and, and as you get deeper into the tournament, the scores seem to uh, be more 70-like as opposed to 80s and low 90s. Uh, and I think that's because the coaching gets really good at, the, at that next level. It's really going to a next level, and the teams get better, more athletes. And I think the preparation and the scouting uh, – you know, becomes really more intense. And, and, and so I think, therefore, people get back in transition. They, they don't turn the ball over to give people easy baskets up and down the floor. And I think it becomes more of a half-court game. And I think uh, the team's ability that go deep in NCAA tournament and win a national championship most of the time, and there are exceptions, obviously, to everything, but I think most of the time uh, it becomes an execution in the half-court, your ability to defend and rebound without fouling taking away easy baskets by the other team. Therefore, the scores are in the 70s, low 70s or high 60s as opposed to the high 80s and low 90s. Uh, Coach Brady, I think you're particularly well-suited to answer this question. Chris Landry on Twitter asked me, he said, uh, Florida controlled the tempo last night. And then he said, is it fair to say, or what do you think, did Mike White win that coaching battle last night? You know, I, you know, guys, but, but let's be honest here. Who, who is the favorite in the league? A couple of couple of guys' names to win Coach of the Year in the SEC. It's not Mike White. Yeah, it's it, fair. It, 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 it's, you know, it, it's Will Wade. Uh, you know, the guy at Tennessee, possibly, because he's winning all the time. Calipari's always in the mix. Kermit Davis at, at Ole Miss, he's picked last. He's fourth. So let, let's be honest there. And to get into one-game comparison of, of Mike White and Will Wade, I think you look at their career and what they've done. Will Wade's done as much or more than – than uh, Mike White has done. So uh, one game doesn't mean somebody's better than the other. It just means Florida, that particular game last night, probably played a little bit better than LSU, and we lost the game in overtime. You know, it's the same deal when I go back to uh, people ask about Nick Saban. Oh, he lost the game. He got beat by Clemson, the, the demise of Nick Saban. All they did was make him mad, and he just had the number one recruit <laughs> class in the country. So get out of my way. Oh, John, win John. Again. So, you know, I'm talking about people – People want to get into that sort of thing because Will Wade loses one game when he's picked fifth in the league. He, he, he's leading the league in first place or tied for first, whatever it is. So I, I don't really want to get into that. Uh, I, I think I think what you need to talk about is what LSU can do, what they need to do now. The, the reason they lost that game is, is Florida did control the tempo, and they did what I've always suggested if I was playing against LSU, double-team Tremont yep. Waters and get the ball out of his hand. I mean, And then they doubled – Nas Reed on the post, and they make it somebody else beat them. And, and Florida did a nice job of getting back in transition. We didn't get easy baskets. But what we did do is what we've done. We got to the free throw line. We shot free throws. We LSU makes 22 free throws a game in SEC play. Last night we shot it poorly from the line. That would have made a difference in that game for sure. Uh, so I think – and in Florida, when if you study Florida's team, Florida is very good when they make threes. They have made ten threes in the game, but then they've had games they've made two. And 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 I I was on there with Matt earlier, and I said if Florida shoots from the three, we got problems. So we got to take them off the three point line because when they do shoot threes, the way they control tempo and, and the way they they rebounded with us, even you know it'd be tough for us. But you know they made ten or eleven threes, whatever it was at the end of the day, and that enhanced their ability to beat us in an overtime game in Baton Rouge. Yeah, last night, LSU, from the free throw line, 16 of 25, 64%. Yeah, and this come from a team that's normally like 78, 80%. Coach, um, how would you have tried to, I guess, schematically break Florida's control of the tempo last night? Because that's why those offensive rebounds they were getting seemed to hurt so much more badly than other games. Like, every time you knew that was another 30 seconds coming off the clock. Well, I think, you know, it, it, look, what I say about the uh, way to play a game or, or something, there's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. It's whatever that coach chooses to do with his particular team. And then it comes down to are they executing what the coach wants them to do. So it's not like there's one way to play it, and, and that's the only way. And, well, we should have done that or should have done this. We're going to do what we want to do based on what Will Wade wants to do with his team, and we've been pretty consistent with that. 
but but I think what Florida did uh, against LSU, that is a, a high potent offensive team that averages in the 80s. I think what they their philosophy was score early or score late, and there wasn't a lot of in between shot clock situations for Florida. They they would they would get the ball up the floor. If they didn't have anything quick in transition. They reversed the ball three or four times. They got the shot clock within a 10 or 12 and then looked to attack the goal. You know, that's a good philosophy against a team like LSU. Last night, they happened to do that a little bit better than LSU does what they do. So, uh, you know, uh, I talked about it a couple of times. They give up 63, we score 83. Whoever does what they do for extended period of time will win the game. Florida did it a little bit better than LSU last night. They happened to win the game in overtime. It, again, LSU had a nice second half. We came back, had a chance to win the game a couple of different times. The ball didn't go in. You got it. Sometimes you have to congratulate the other team by what they did, not beat up our team yes. for what they yes. did do. And I, 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 I try to get away from all of that. Uh, LSU has got a good basketball team. We got beat at home. Coach Wade's upset about it. Uh, he, he, you know, he's going to have them ready for Saturday. I feel confident in that. And I don't think they were looking by Florida at all. I really, I really don't go down that road either because I don't want to take away from what Florida did. So, you know, you, 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 it, we lost a close game in overtime. We could have won the game. Uh, Florida did a nice job. Congratulate them. Move on. Let's get ready for a good Tennessee team coming in here on Saturday. Have you seen Tennessee play? What do you like about this matchup, or how do you like this matchup? Well, I haven't seen Tennessee up close and personal. You know, sometimes when I watch the, on TV and I watch tape or whatever the case may be, I like to see them up close and personal because mm-hmm. sometimes it changes my perspective when I get to actually see them physically and how they play the game. But, you know, I think this game with Florida is a good preparation for how Tennessee wants to play. Score early, score late. Uh, they're a disciplined team. They're not going, they, they, they run probably a little bit more than Florida. It's the same type of team. They're going to try to control tempo. They're going to be very efficient offensively. They're going to be a very, very sound defensive basketball team. They're going to try to take you out in transition, not let you get easy baskets. Uh, don't turn. Don't have live ball turnovers where they you have to earn it in the half court. And I think it's going to be much like this game with Florida, a half court execution game by both teams. And 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 we'll just see what happens. But I think the preparation for Tennessee is much like the preparation against Florida, I think it's going to be the same type of game. Coach, last night uh, I came away very impressed with Nas Reed. Uh, Like you said, they were doubling him every time. I thought he played very hard, fought for everything, came up with some huge rebounds down the stretch. Um, If if that's the tactic that, like, teams are going to continue to use, right, just double Nas whenever you can, uh, how how do you think – LSU can work it to where they can create more open looks that aren't necessarily Nas just having to try to fight through both guys. Well, you know, you got to pull him out occasionally and, and pull him at the top of the key and let him catch the ball and decide to drive it, play, make it, or, or shoot it uh, and and get it. But when he gets on the post, they'll cut somebody and dive into the goal and, and, and Nas can clear himself with a couple of dribbles and look for cutters to the goal because he's a very good passer. The only thing Nas did last night, sometimes a little casual last night in driving the ball, he got it knocked out of yep. his hands a little bit. But I, I, I told Will after the game, and, you know, it's tough for me to interview Will <laughs> when, we, when we lose the game. I really don't want to say anything because I knew how hurt he was last night, and it bothered me a little bit. But, but the positive thing I told him was the play of Nas. He did turn it over five times, but I'm going to tell you, that guy has really improved. He did. He dove on the the floor yep. for loose balls. Yes, he got yes. big rebounds when early in the year people were saying he can't rebound the ball. He scored the ball off the post. He made a three in the in the right corner in front of in front of our bench. Uh, you know he he has progressed tremendously, and I, I always equate that to good coaching, instruction, teaching, and hold players accountable. You don't get better unless there's coaching going on and, and making them better, and that's what's happening with him and a couple other the LSU players. So. You know, we, we lost the game, but I, we're going to be ready to play Saturday. It's going to be a great environment. I hope everybody comes out there and gets behind this team because they've earned the right to have the support by the fans by what they've done this year. Let's LSU go. Sports Radio Network, 11 years walking the sidelines as the head coach. Now you can hear him on the call. Saturday, 11 o'clock, tip-off, 10.30 pregame with him and Blair. Courtside for you from the Maravich Center. Going to be sold out Saturday morning in an electric atmosphere for national television. Thanks, Coach. Okay, guys. So, Take it easy, Coach. All right, there you